Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I have another foundation test for you. Today I will be testing out the Revlon Color Stay Foundation in the normal to dry formula. So this foundation, according to the website, is being promoted as an all day demi matte foundation, which is interesting for a dry to normal skin formula. Normally dry skin formulas tend to come in a more hydrating formula instead of a matte. It is also available in a combo skin to oily skin formula. So let's go on the Revlon website and see what they have to say about it. So the website says, America's number one foundation now with a mess-free pump and SPF protection in 35 shades for every skin tone and type. Flawless demi-matte coverage that lasts up to 24 hours. A comfortable, lightweight formula specifically made for normal to dry skin to provide a smooth, perfected look. Okay, and what else do they say about this? Perfected demi matte finish for up to 24 hours. I won't be testing it for 24 hours because I can't stay awake that long. I'm old. Okay, this is confusing. It says it was available in 35 shades. Now they're saying it's 13 shades. So maybe the description is including the oily formula as well. Um, they say it's buildable to full coverage, contains hyaluronic acid to hydrate skin over time. It's oil free and it has an SPF of 20. So the shade range actually looks pretty fair to light, although it's really hard to gauge from the website. So this retails on Ulta's website for $12.99. So I purchased the shade Buff, which is a lot lighter than I normally would go, but I've been having issues with foundations oxidizing like crazy on my face. And I think it's happening for two reasons. First of all, I am purchasing foundations that are a little too dark for my face. I, for whatever reason, think in my head that my complexion is darker than it is. Um, so what I did is I bought a shade that matches my neck perfectly because my neck and my collarbone area are quite fair. So even if this color does oxidize a little, it should blend in to my neck area um, better than some of the previous foundations I've been using. So... <laughs> We're gonna see how this goes. So if you wanna know what I think of the Revlon Color Stay Foundation, don't go anywhere, just keep watching. Oh Lord, that zit is coming out to play today. I'm not sure what's going on with my skin, but ever since I turned 40, it's like I'm going through puberty again. Very weird. Oh well. I didn't sleep well last night. We had a bit of a heat wave in Southern Ontario. And when I say heat wave, it was like 90 freaking degrees. Very unusual for me. Um, fortunately, things have gone back to normal. So I'll be able to sleep in my bedroom tonight. I only have one room in the house with air conditioner and it's my living room. So I was forced to sleep on my pillow couch last night, which pillow couches are good in concept, bad in reality. They are so not comfortable. So I am looking harsh in the face today. So well, we might need a little bit of extra coverage to help me out. Anyway, just put the makeup on Leah. Um, I decided to do something a little bit different. Um, I normally, for whatever reason, pick foundations that blend a little bit more with my melasma discoloration rather than my normal skin, which is silly because I have a fair neck and I have a fair collarbone. So when I do that, I end up with like a giant foundation ring around my neck. And plus on top of it, the foundations I've been testing out, a lot of them have been oxidizing to a really unflattering color. So. I decided to go with the shade that matched my neck. Oh, I'm so scared. It's so light looking. The worst that can happen is it just doesn't work. It's only foundation. All right, you guys know the drill because I've been talking long enough. Um, I have to show you guys this. The consistency of this foundation is very, very runny. And that was after shaking the bottle. So it makes me think this is not a full coverage foundation. I haven't worn foundation this pale since uh, I was in college. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I decided I was J-Lo and went to a deeper shade, which is silly. So this is a very lightweight foundation. So this is definitely not a full coverage foundation. It's more, at least with the sponge, it's more lightweight to medium at best. Possibly be buildable, but ooh. I just caught myself on the monitor. I look like the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> but see how it matches my neck perfectly? Yeah, it's matching my neck perfectly. This was a good move for me. 
Even though it's really lightweight, I'm liking how it looks with the sponge. So I'm gonna go in and do my other half with the brush and see which I like better. I just looked at my hand, the foundation has oxidized a little, but because I bought a shade so light, it's oxidizing to a color that matches my hand perfectly. This seems to have been a good choice. One thing I will say about this foundation is that it dries very, very quickly. Like you have to really move fast in order to get it blended because once it hits your face, it just dries almost to a powder finish. Even though the coverage is a bit better with the brush, I think I like how it looks better with the sponge only because on this side, there seems to be no texture at all that's coming through. And on this side where that I did with the brush, there's a little bit of texture coming through on my nose. So I think I'm gonna try and smooth this out with the sponge and then build up the coverage a little bit on this side. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this foundation is definitely a lightweight to medium coverage at best. I can still see freckles coming through on this side. And then I have like I don't know if you guys can see it right there. I have like a big melasma patch. I'm gonna try and touch it up with a little concealer just to blend it out a bit more. I tried to build up the coverage with the foundation, but it just, it wasn't covering this at all. The color shade, as it turned out, the color did darken a little, just a teeny bit, but it's blended out into a color that works really well with my actual skin tone. So choosing a few shades lighter than I normally would go was a good move for me. So, so far I am loving how this is sitting on my skin. After I went over this with the sponge, there's absolutely no texture where there was with the brush. It's a completely smooth finish on my skin. There's no texture on my forehead. There are no fine lines that are being accentuated and it just, it blended out really nicely. There's no streaks. Um, just overall, there's, it's a really nice finish on my skin. It did dry down to what looks like a matte finish, which I'm kind of surprised by because this came in two formulas. It was available in normal to dry, which is what I purchased and it comes in normal to oily. So um, I'm kind of surprised that this dried down to a matte finish. I figured it would be more of a dewy hydrating formula, maybe a satin finish. Because it dried down to a matte finish on my face, I'm not gonna set this with a powder because I don't think it really needs it. So, so far I'm really liking how this is looking on my skin. It's blended really well. There's no texture, there's no dry patches, there's no fine lines. Cat air in my eye. Woo this is what happens when you live with cats. Woo! Wow, darn little feline. Okay, I think I got it. I'm gonna go put on the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Wow, my God, this lipstick is fuchsia, but it matches my top perfectly. So the time check is 9.52. So far, it has darkened a little bit, but it is blending, as you can see, it is blending beautifully with like my neck and collarbone area. It's nice not to have a big foundation line going around my face. The only thing I'm really concerned with is um, I found a bit of a dry patch forming along my lower chin. I took my beauty blender out and smoothed it out a bit. I, I'm hoping it stays that way, but, but other than that, it's looking really nice on my skin. There's no texture on my forehead. There is no texture around my nose area. There's no creasing around my eyes. The only thing I would have liked to see a little bit more from this foundation is um, this area right here. You can still see that dark patch coming through. I was gonna touch this up with concealer, but because it um, dried to a matte finish, I find that anything that dries to a matte finish doesn't mix well with concealer. It just, it just doesn't. It ends up getting cakey and a big old mess, so I decided just to leave it. I'm going forward using this again. I'll probably put concealer on this first and then put my foundation on top of it and see what happens. But so far, everything is looking good. I'm quite pleased with it. I'm just, I'm hoping, hoping I don't get any darker because I really like the way things are so far. I like the color, I like the finish, I like everything. But um, the real test will be how this wears over the day and how it stands up to a 10 hour wear time. So um, I will see you guys in five hours and let you know how this foundation is wearing the rest of the day. So the time check is 3.05. The foundation has been on my face for five hours now. 
So the foundation did oxidize a little, but it didn't oxidize to anything orange or unflattering on my skin. It just, it did darken, but it darkened into a color that has blended really well with my skin. So my idea of selecting a shade that's a few shades lighter than I normally would go seems to have worked out well. So for the most part, everything is looking actually pretty good. There's a few slight problem areas, but for the most part, this foundation is holding up really well so far. I have no texture on my forehead and there's absolutely no creasing around my eyes. So I didn't set this foundation with a powder because it dried to a matte finish. And typically whenever I've set foundations that are matte with powders, it just makes my dry skin drier. So I left it alone. And this was probably a good idea because around my chin, from here up, everything seems to be okay. But across my chin, I'm seeing some serious dryness going on here. I used an everyday moisturizer with an SPF 30 and I used a hydrating primer, possibly a different primer and possibly a different moisturizer. I might not have the dryness around my chin and it does seem to be breaking up around my nose a bit and in the corners of my nose and it's a little bit on both sides that this is happening. Yeah, the tip of my nose is completely worn away already. I can see my freckles coming through. And as I'm looking closer in the mirror, I can see a big dry patch right there and another one right there. So overall at the five hour mark, it's not great, but it's not bad either. So those are my results so far. I will check in with you guys later and let you know how this foundation wore the rest of the day. So the time check is 8.20. The foundation has been on my face for a little over 10 hours. I'm in my bathrobe. I'm getting ready to settle in for the night. It's Friday. I'm watching Dateline. Overall, my thoughts on this foundation really haven't changed much since the five hour mark. It's not especially bad and it's not especially wonderful. Let's just talk about the bad parts first, just to get them done and out of the way. Um, my forehead area, this like little area here, my nose and my chin and under my nose have completely worn away. There's no foundation at all there anymore or very little foundation. And I didn't set this with a powder, so maybe if I did, the foundation in those areas possibly could have lasted longer. But the main claim on the website was that this was a 24-hour long-wearing foundation. I don't know about the long wear part. All I know is I don't have any foundation there, 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 and there anymore. It's just it's completely worn away. So I have issues with dry skin. It's just one of the things I have to deal with. Along the sides of my chin here are like two ginormous dry patches and then there's a big one like right here which is being magnified by a giant pimple as well in the same area but right here is a big dry patch now with all of that going on in my face I haven't entirely given up on this foundation yet, mainly because I love the color match. It blended perfectly with my skin, it blended perfectly. I don't have the big foundation ring going around my neck. The shade match was perfect. So um, with all that, I'm gonna to continue to play around with this foundation. I'm gonna use some different moisturizers, different primers, maybe take the chance and set it with a powder. See if I get a different result before I write this foundation off completely. So those are my results of my Revlon Color Stay Foundation 10 hour wear test. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing so you can be notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!